Hi Ed Saviour and welcome to my Bonsai Retreat and today it's another first for me because I am going to try and develop a really good sort of plate plate root system for uh, spinning of five trees. I've got three different varieties and the method I'm going to employ is the, I think it's Ebihara where you put holes in a, a tile or you use some object with a holy thing in it and in my case I'm going to be using uh, a child's plastic plate which uh, picked up for 50 pence and we're going to put some holes in there see if we can develop a, a cracking root structure that's all entwined and, and beautiful with uh, these. Now I've got, um, I've got some beech, got some oaks and for those of you who remember when I was making my uh, slate and lava rock uh, penjing I've got the remaining uh, maples so I'm going to be using those as well. So I don't need to, to show you how I untangle roots. This isn't about roots, this isn't about anything like this. All I'm going to be doing is trying to get these into a, a format that's very much like this. A single stick, which means I can pick a good hole that I can drill to slot these up into plastic plates. So, if you think that's going to be something you'll enjoy, or at least enjoy watching me struggle with, then keep on watching. It's going to be fun. So, Ebihara, first time we're doing it, and uh, I'm going to enjoy this. I've got um, five maples. They're all actually uh, from the uh, the batch that was picked up in 2014 as one-year-old uh, seedlings, and I'll cut them all back down, and hopefully, what were they? We need 10 years old. Probably a bit old to be doing this, but uh, hey, who knows? But the first thing we've got to do is uh, find a drill bit that's going to uh, pretty well match the circumference at the base of these because I want these roots as close to the bottom as I can get them. Now the base I'm going to use, as I say, is just a kid's plate. I've got my son's Dewalt drill. It's good when you do that. I think I've got a 13 millimeter uh, windy, windy bit around it. All I'm going to do is put five holes around this at a predetermined uh, distance. Hopefully not too far away, otherwise it's going to take many, many years for the actual roots to start interlocking with each other. And uh, I'll come back to you when I've done it. Well, no, I won't come back to you. I might even show you me drill one hole. I can't wait. Okay, so I've marked roughly five holes, so they're going to be pretty equal distance. The center of the trees are there. There's probably going to be this much space between them. I think that's enough. So I'm going to slowly... There are the holes, there's the holes. And the key is I've got to be careful enough that I don't actually split the plastic. And then we'll just check for fit. I think that's the best I'm gonna get. A couple of millimeters either side, but once they start growing, I'd like to think I can put on uh, that much girth. So I'm gonna do the other four and then we'll get these set up. That was fun. Five holes, pretty equidistant. I'll have it that way down. It's going to sit in a pond basket with the uh, usual uh, zeolite and uh, pumice mix. And uh, I've just got to thread these in. Hopefully this won't be too difficult. Um, now each of them has got lots of little bud points. So if I end up knocking a few off, hopefully that shouldn't be too much of an issue. That's that one. That one, it's a bit of a thinner one. That one. Hopefully it's gonna look good when it's all together, but. Okay. Obviously the thing we're trying to do, well, I can do the final adjustment, is have them splaying outwards and in some sort of reasonable radial pattern. But 
that's pretty well it. So that's that's them. I mean, I'll be able to adjust them once they're in the uh, basket, but hopefully, we get loads of roots around there one day in the future. So. It won't work. I'm going to do it the other way around. I've just realised why. I can't see what's underneath there, so that doesn't work. Okay, I um, I had to do some adaption because um, the the smaller pond basket meant that there was just no way I could uh, get these in place with the soil between the roots and also allow myself to water down below. The uh, the plate was the same size as the circle, so there they are. Roughly, roughly positioned how I want them. I'm just going to put little rocks to position them in a bit, I think. Okay, well, that's the, uh, the Japanese maples all put in there. I'll put some rocks just in between them to try and separate. I'll, I'll zone in on that in a minute. Yeah, apologies that I've had to uh, adapt the, uh, the pond basket that I'm using for it. But when I show you the, uh, the beech or the oak, it'll perhaps be a little bit clearer. But either way, this should work. As the trees grow, uh, put on loads of vigour, the trunks expand. They're only going to need to expand by two or three millimetres before they start cutting into that plastic. So hopefully, one year, should get enough growth on there to actually start encouraging root growth. But hey... Who knows? Quite happy, I don't know. We'll see what happens. I imagine the next time we'll be seeing this is this time next year, maybe? I don't know. But uh, let's get on to the next one, shall we? Okay, so just had a bit of fun with the uh, the maple one. And now the main one I was really concentrating on was this um, beach group. And I bought 10 of these two years ago. And they've just sat in this tub. Um, I can't even remember whether I, I, I originally tied the um, bases together. but. I'm going to have to hack these back. I mean, they're still quite thin whips. How much did I pay? £10. We don't need any tops. So let's just remove loads of top. Because obviously if I've got the top there, I can't thread them up through the hole that I'm going to make. Uh, so hopefully what I'll do is find places where there are buds that I can uh, grow on from. But let's get rid of this big stuff first. And then we'll separate them. I think the sun's about to come out again. What I want to do is find five suitable ones that'll make a, again a nice little um, little sort of spinny group, and then uh, it goes ready. So there's a, an absolute ton of roots. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is cut right through halfway through that. Now, there's only one risk with doing it this way without further investigation. What I don't know is how far down the actual root base starts from. I could have accidentally just cut through the bases of the tree and lost all the roots. Should have a look and find out if I've been an absolute dum-dum then. I really do surprise myself sometimes about just how dim I can be. I'm told I can be a bit dim. Here we go. Well, there's definitely some One, two, three, four, five. Some quite big, thick, um, finger-sized, well, hopefully, roots, but I've got a horrible feeling it may be worse than that. But only one way to find out, isn't there? Bobcat root rate. Oh, dear. I really may have messed up here. I can feel it in the bones. I mean, obviously there's thin fibrous roots, but chances are they belong to weeds. Please. Well, there's definitely a root of some sort there. Even as I did it, I thought, well, I do hope it's not too low down. Okay. Well, 
there's definitely a mat of roots here, but well, quite a bit of chopping. And to be fair, I think knowing what those things grow like, we've got sort of sticks like this, a couple of this sort of size. And you know, when you get these whips in um, packs of 10 or 20, we've all seen it, you get a mixture of, of root formations. So I've cut all the surrounding branches off. I have no idea how they're going to respond to that. I presume they're just going to bud back through the uh, the main trunk. But I now need to find appropriate uh, drill hole to get these uh, put into this. Obviously, I've got my DeWalt drill, and uh, I'll basically put the the five holes like I did with the uh, maples in there and come back to you. Okay, I've got my five holes. Um, on the last ones, I just worried that there'd be no way for the water to get through. I'm sure it would drain through. So I've created four more holes so that when it goes down, we'll hopefully get some uh, some water going down there with it. I also pulled it upwards. So I please don't hope I create a small mini lake where I'm trying to get roots to form because all that happens, they'll rot, but we'll see. Got two healthy buds here, which I'd really like to see do well. So that's one in there tight fit, so to speak. Let's get this one up there. This thing going to go in this one, so I'll probably want to do a little bit of jiggling to get the roots into the soil. The key here is really getting the soil in under the existing roots. It's another good reason for putting these holes in there, because I'm able to actually put soil in. I suppose the worst thing that could happen here is that the absolute worst is one tree survives and I have a one tree root planting with roots all over the place. Who knows? When I bought the plastic um, plastic plates, I thought they'd be ideal, but having looked at it now, perhaps I'm not quite as convinced that they were as suitable. We'll see. Okay, so it's really just about making sure now they grow. I suppose that, that will be the first sign that um, this is going to work is that sometime in the next sort of four to six weeks we're going to get some buds that are going to send out some new shoots and the beach always go later in the, uh, in the early spring. If we see that then we know that we're potentially going to be on for a success in a few years to come. But it's always daunting when you have to cut so much back. Yeah. Hey, we shall see, shan't we? Just means you're going to have to hang around longer to find out the results. I'm going to do exactly the same with some oaks I've got. And uh, therefore we'll end up having maple, beech and oak and see if any of them work out. Now I think one thing I love about oak is that you can literally cut them back to stumps. And if they're healthy, then they'll send up new, new buds from lower points. So these ones I can actually cut back really tightly. And unlike the beech where I'm a little bit, mm, maybe, maybe not. I have every confidence that the oaks, if you take off a lot of their dust, will just send out new buds from the trunk itself. So I'm going to get these all out. In fact, it's easy. I'm just going to pull them all out. And uh, uh, see what we've got from it. Um, it's going to be exactly the same principle. So I'll tell you what, um, I know you'd love to see me drill some holes and and sort of fuss about, but what I'm gonna do is show you when I've got them all in. And the hardest thing I'm finding with this is making sure there's actually soil underneath the plastic, uh, plastic, um, plastic plate. And I think the biggest mistake I made, and everyone would probably be putting their hands up going, idiot, is it had a curved lip, goodness knows. Idiot. But will it make a difference? We'll find out. I think what I will say is that I haven't tried this with anything that's cost me, well actually no, the beach cost me £10 two years ago. Maples total cost about a pound back in 2014. And these uh, oaks I dug up, I think I dug up myself to be honest. So, you know, I'm, I'm experimenting on stuff that isn't costing. I do want to see how this works out. I mean, I've already learned a lesson and I'll try this again next year and I'll be using a flat, probably use a flat tile actually. Traditionally, a lot of other people are using didn't have a tile suitable. Okay, well, that's the oaks put together. As I've already uh, indicated, I've got a lot of hope for the oak just because of the uh, 
the nature in which they grow and how hardy they are. So this could potentially be an interesting seven tree group. I'll be very, very intrigued next year to have a little dig around there and see if there are any roots actually growing you know, or actually if any of the trees are alive. I wonder how these, uh, these three projects are getting on. They've been uh, down at uh, Tony's place, so to speak, for the last month now. And uh, I bet you want to know, one, if they're in leaf, and two, if they look like there's any life there, which hopefully leaves will give that away. So let's, let's pop down and have a look and see how the, uh, what is it, the oak, the maple, and I believe, is it beech or birch? Birch, I think. You'd think I'd know, wouldn't you? All the maples are leafed out. I don't intend to do anything at all with them. Uh, we've got some dead leaves there, but generally it's all looking very, very healthy. And I just need to continue to let that grow because while the leaves are providing energy, that's providing strength to grow more roots. Let's keep it going. What I do need to do though, is just watch out for any weeds that we certainly don't want competing in this. So yeah, very happy with the uh, maple one. And uh, how is the beach one going on? Well, I'm glad you asked. As I say, 17th of May, um, we've got leaf coming out from all of them. Some of them have had some issues with some uh, bug infestations, this one in particular, but you'll notice that every single point there's new uh, buds coming out. Same with this one here. So I'm very, very happy with that. And uh, again, all I'm gonna be doing, leaving it. Uh, keep an eye on it for spraying it down for bugs, but I just need this to grow I need loads and loads of energy going Downwards to knit those roots together beneath the plate But yeah, very very happy with that And what about the oak one? I hear you ask well here it is the main thing is is that out of it all of the uh, three seven oaks have clearly leafed out some of them better than others and uh, got a couple of little dead ones, but the main thing is here is, uh, as with the, um, the beech and also the maple, they're leafing out, um, which means they've survived my, uh, my very clumsy uh, attempt at ebihiring them or whatever it is. It's probably not the right phrase. Now we'll just let them go and uh, probably we'll revisit these in, I don't know, another two months time, maybe even nearer August. So yeah, very, very uh, happy with how the ebihar is going. Um, a big apology now straight away to um, to Alex Braunton. He um, he got me some little metal um, washers when I was over at his place and he had a whole load that he'd been doing singly on his maples and I asked if I could have some because I'd need them. I was going to use them but uh, Lexi cleaned up the back, uh, the back area and haven't seen them since so apologies for that. But anyway, for those of you who enjoyed watching my dabble in the world of uh, Ebihara to create that lovely plate type root system. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, big like as always. If you think anyone else, anyone could benefit from this mess that I've just had today, then please share it. Otherwise, subscribe if you like my style of content. May not necessarily be technically the best, but I do think it's entertaining. And uh, I wish you all the best. Happy Bonsai and God bless. Cheers.